Hi! In today's video, we will take a look at this Vivitar Rapid Travel Charger. I recently picked up a new digital camera. It is the Sony A6000 mirrorless one. It should be an upgrade to the Canon PowerShot point and shoot camera that I have been using to create my videos. The A6000 series is best known for its fast autofocusing capability, so I think it will be a very good camera for my teardown videos. One thing about this camera is that it only came with a USB charging cable and no dedicated charger. And Sony's recommended charger is very expensive. So I just bought an aftermarket one and uh, a couple of uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, so hopefully I can use these to along with this uh, camera. One of the things I immediately noticed about this charger is it's a very, very light. And it came in, you know, it's uh, significantly lighter than the uh, than your than even the Apple phone charger. And uh, given its size, it uh, doesn't seem there's much inside. So we'll take a we'll open it up later and uh, to see exactly what is uh, in there. But uh, the first thing I noticed about this charger is that it comes with actually only two contacts here. So this means that uh, if you look at the battery here, we have the uh, three contacts. One of the contacts here is for the thermistor, because when you are charging the battery, potentially you can, uh, if there's something wrong with the battery, and it can get hot. So the idea is that the circuit inside your charger would protect your battery from overheating and uh, shut it down to prevent uh, disastrous results like fire and stuff like that. But as you can see here, this uh, charger does not have that. So, um, another thing is that you know, this one actually, one thing I do like about it is, uh, at least from the first looking at it, is uh, it has this uh, removable charger plate where you can presumably replace it with uh, different uh, adapters for different type of, types of batteries. And that's actually quite clever. And I wish, uh, now, the other thing is that I don't know if you, they sell these kind of adapters separately in addition to this charger because that will be very very uh, good so you don't have to buy many of these chargers you just buy different adapters for your battery and uh, that was an idea but uh, the second thing I noticed is that you know if you look at the at the bottom here we do have three contacts uh, so we will take a look later uh, to see if actually inside this charger we have the circuitry for the therm uh, thermistor. But you also notice that the bottom of these, uh, uh, the adapter plate also has three contacts. So I'm not sure where the third contact went. So let's uh, take a look, uh, measure it to see that uh, if we can find out anything. So let's uh, put it in ohm range and uh, let me just see if we can figure out something here. Oh, wait. Okay, so, oh, hang on, let me just put it on continuity check. So it seems to me that the neg negative terminal and uh, the, uh, the thermistor is actually shorted. So that made me believe that there's probably not going to be any circuitry inside this charger to actually be able to detect the thermistor, uh, the temperature. Because typically th thermistors are a negative temperature coefficient and the hotter it is, the lower the resistance. So um, it's highly unlikely that there's any cutoff mechanism in here because otherwise it would uh, be cut off prematurely. So this is actually a very dangerous design because without that um, thermistor, bad things uh, could potentially happen. But uh, before that, uh, before we take it apart, we also want to take a look at what is the, the charging uh, characteristic of this uh, charger. Now from, from its specification, you can see that it says the output is DC 8.4 volts at a maximum of 600 milliamps. So this made me believe this is basically just a uh, maybe a constant voltage limit, a current limited charger. So 
I mean, that would be fine if it's uh, indeed like that. So let's uh, just verify that. I'll plug it in. And let me just measure the battery terminal's uh, voltage to see that, uh, to see, oh well, you can't see here. So let me uh, pop this up to see what the voltage reads right now. Okay, so it might not be as easy as, uh, okay, so it's at uh, 8.35, give or take. So it's actually, it will, should be okay. So basically I was gonna, you know, the, the, the reason I'm checking this is to see if there's any possibility of overcharging. So just by the look of, uh, you know, the voltage output right now, it doesn't seem like it. So now let's take a look at the short circuit current. So for that, I'm gonna, amp. Uh, let's put it here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the short current, uh, short circuit current. Okay, okay so it's at uh, 800 milliamp. And uh, let me just try it again. So it looks reasonable because, uh, you know, the idea is when you are putting a battery in, because the battery has some um, uh, voltage already, so it should probably should not be um, all the way up to 800 milliamp. So let's take, just for testing, let's put one of the, uh, the battery came with this uh, charger in to take a look to see what it does. Okay, so it does have some sort of uh, charging indication to see whether it's a uh, charging or I, I'm guessing it's a, whether it's, oh, depends on what the state of the charge, I guess. It actually changes the color of the uh, LED. So that's uh, so far what we know about this uh, charger. And uh, let me take it apart and uh, see if uh, we can find anything interesting inside. So from the back of the charger, um, I'm not sure if we, can see I don't see any place where I can open it so let me just feel if we have any um, oh I did feel there are possibly two holes here so let me see if I can just uh, uh, take this you know what we're not going to use to let me see if we can uh, either peel this or just uh, brute force open it I think I'm just going to take the latter route because uh, hopefully that's a screw. Uh, I'm not sure now. You know, let me just uh, open it up. Okay. Yeah, it is indeed a screw. So let me take the screw out. Out. Oh. Okay. So the whole thing just peels away. All right. So let me just do that. We're not going to use it anyway, so let's uh, hopefully after the removal of these two screws, I able to open this unit up. So let's just see this. And uh, it will be highly annoying if I can't open it after I remove that. Hang on, let me just get off the camera to see if I can uh, uh, persuade it to open. Okay, so after some wiggling, and I did manage to open it without breaking it. Actually, it uh, is uh, snapped on quite tightly. And uh, here we go. Oh, actually, I li kind of like the mechanism, how they did the, uh, uh, the mains power input. So as you can see here, when I rotate this, this two pins uh, make contact with this two metal plates. So that's how they made the contact here. Okay, so now let's just uh, take this apart. Take this out, rather. And actually the construction, I don't mind it at all. It's uh, very simple. And we'll take a look at that chip in a minute. And as you can see here, we do have a very generous uh, spacing between the mains uh, the primary side and uh, the secondary side, so it is properly isolated. And there's no opto coupler between the primary and secondary, 
which made me believe that the primary is just an unregulated step-down converter. Actually, I will take a few high-resolution photos and probably post on my website. So let's take a look in a little bit of uh, more detail. Here we have a, so the input goes through this fusible resistor and um, and then it's uh, rectified and then you know it's chopped by this uh, transistor here. So it's a very simple high voltage to uh, low voltage DC-DC converter on the primary side and since there's no regulation of any kind. Now uh, the drawback of this design is that the power factor would be probably pretty poor. Uh, actually, I did not measure the power factor, but uh, we can take a look after I assemble it back. So the magic happens all happens on the secondary side. Okay, so this uh, chip here is actually a on semiconductors, or it's a TI. It's a quite generic. It's a MC thirty four thirty four zero sixty three. That's a step up and step down in which uh, inverting switching regulator. So it's actually not a dedicated battery charging chip. It's just a DC-DC uh, converter chip. Now this one obviously is converted, uh, it's uh, configured as a, uh, as a buck converter. So it steps down the voltage. So basically uh, the unregulated voltage on the secondary gets uh, further rectified and then it's regulated by this uh, uh, by this DC to DC converter chip here. So that explains uh, why we have this uh, uh, specification here. Oh, it's right here. So basically, the specification is uh, you know the secondary is 8.4 volts at uh, uh, 600 milliamps. So basically, it's just a power supply here, nothing more. And uh, so we do have a little bit more circuitry here. Basically, this is to uh, you know to give you this uh, bicolor LED battery charging progress indicator. So when the battery is uh, lower than a specific voltage, it's uh, turned orange, and when it's uh, uh, further up is uh, you know mixed color of the orange and the green and then when it's uh, fully charged it turns green so that's what that voltage regulator is doing there so now as I mentioned earlier there are uh, okay so here we go there are three pins here but if you noticed inside the second pin the middle thermistor pin is not connected at all so this potentially going to be very dangerous uh, when you are charging this unattended. And should something go wrong with this uh, uh, battery, if it's uh, for whatever reason the regulation is lost and uh, uh, you, you know, input a uh, re relatively high voltage for the input, uh, for the charging voltage, uh, this ha battery could be overheating and uh, because there's no thermistor detecting that, um, it would just you know keep going and uh, no shutdown and uh, it possibly uh, cause a fire. But other than that, I, I can't fault this um, uh, design much. It's just a uh, fixed voltage, current limited power supply, essentially, and uh, using that to charge the, uh, the the battery at a fixed 8.4 terminal voltage. So that should be fine for the majority uh, for most of the batteries so now let me put it back and uh, enough rumbling and I will uh, put it back and the test is power factor so I expect that power factor would be really poor basically that's a characteristics of any kind of this uh, single transistor configuration on the primary side
Okay, so now let's um, put down this power meter here. Okay, and uh, let me just uh, put the plate back on. We'll put a battery in so that uh, we can test. Okay. So now let me. And as you can see, it's uh, being charged. So let's see the power factor. Yep. Yep. It's just around uh, 0.5. So, anyway, so I think um, this is reasonably well built. Uh, charger unfortunately it just I for whatever reason all the chargers I saw uh, for the aftermarket for this FW50 battery all have just two um, terminals there's no uh, thermistor uh, at all so if they could you know add a th thermistor there I would give it uh, you know basically a very satisfactory um, a rating but uh, since it doesn't have that, it's potentially a fire hazard. And uh, that said, you know, uh, for normal use, if, as long as you don't leave your battery on the charger for like many days, um, you should be fine. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And I will catch up with you next time.